one of the most important things when you are out here fishing for trout is what's going on all oh, my real ones welcome back to another it gets real adventure it's your boy b the flossy fisherman we are doing something a little bit different today and that is the beginner's guide on how to catch stock trout first things first you would need a fishing license so you can go to your bass pro you can go to big five here in california it is 17 dollars for a day pass and 54 dollars for a year license you can get your fishing license here at walmart and you can get everything else that you need if you are just getting into fishing you don't want to break the bank to have some fun you don't have to break the bank to have some fun so you can start off with something very simple a simple ten dollar zebco slingshot this is what i started off fishing with a five foot six inches medium light pole i say you want anywhere from five six to six six and you want it medium light if not ultra light and what that does is um lets you enjoy the fight also trout have very good vision so you don't want to use no heavy line at all um, you want to use maybe eight pound test at max now when it comes to treble hooks i use right here size 14. now you can go as small as size 18 but going that small you have chances of the trout actually swallowing that hook and they therefore they get gut hooked so that's not good if you're not planning on keeping your fish but size 14 it's just big enough you still have a chance of them gut hooking that but it's not as likely if you don't want to use treble hooks you can use size 6 bait holder hook you do want to pick up some bobbers now the bobbers are going to be used as a bite detector you want to get a pack of snap swivels so you connect these snap swivels to your bobber now you got your bite detector another thing you will need barrel swivel this is what i like to use half ounce egg sinkers this is it y'all this is the stuff 42 percent stronger rainbow power bait i didn't cause so many limits on the berkeley 42 percent stronger now you may find some that just say extra scent or natural scent but this by far the 42 percent stronger has been the most effective for me you want to keep it simple so power bait is the way to go for beginners but also power eggs that's what you would use your size six hooks for you're gonna need a pole holder we're gonna go to the register get the total amount on this this station here you can get your fishing license for the day or for the year but i already have mine so like i said this is a one stop shop you can get everything you need to get on your mission for fishing all right so the total came out to 34 75 if i didn't get those power eggs man this would have been you know about 30 dollars Ooh, i realized i forgot something y'all beads beads i forgot the beads got another item that i picked up for myself that you guys also may be interested in getting but this was eight dollars man and this is a floating fish basket so when you are in lakes that have comorants, otters, anything like that, and you have your fish floating free on a stringer, well, they could come take your fish. But if you have them in this basket, man, they are protected, they can't get away. So good investment for myself and for you guys also, if you are in lakes that have those, you know, predators that might want to come up on your fish. You do typically want to go on the stock day if not man maybe the day after or the day after that i mean the first couple of days 
after the stock are the trout are most active now you can have 10 pound braid or whatever as your main line but you want no more than eight pound test for your leader line and i'm gonna use the same line that came on the spool the stock line but i'm gonna use about three and a half feet because some of these lakes the bottoms are covered with a lot of algae a lot of grass so what you want is your bait to float above all of that and that's why i'm using the carolina rig and power bait or the power eggs so your egg sinker is going to go to the bottom while your leader is going to float above all that and you're trying to get it to float amongst that water column that these fish are just cruising around at so they see your bait so I'd say, you know, it is good to know the lake or the pond that you're fishing. Um, just try to get a guesstimate, man, of how deep that is, you know. So if you're in a pond that's about three feet deep, I'd say you want to make your leader maybe about a foot and a half. So you're right in the middle column of where the fish are swimming. Say three and a half It's good do want to have some nail clippers or you know if you have pliers that come with some clippers on them those are very helpful so now we're going to get to the carolina rig first you got your leader line here you got your main line here so you're going to put that half ounce egg sinker on first then you're going to follow that with a bead Like so, gonna get your barrel swivel. And this is a size 10. I say, you know, you wanna go from anywhere from a 10 to 12. We're gonna use a lot of small tackle for trout fishing. But the knot I'm gonna do is the improved clinch knot. So what you do is feed it through the eye of your barrel swivel, wrap it around your finger to make a loop. Then you're gonna go around one, two, three, four, and five. Now that bottom loop right there that you have created, you're gonna take the top of your tag in, go through that bottom hoop. Now that you have done that, it creates a top hoop. So you're gonna run that tag in through the top hoop. Once you've done that, grab your tag in, pull on it, and lubricate your line. Now, why is it important to lubricate your line? It's so when you're tightening it, tightening that knot, it doesn't burn the line. All that friction causes your line to burn and it could warp and weaken your line. So then you wanna cut your tag in right here so that's why you always want to lubricate your line, you know, working with uh, mono or fluorocarbon. Then again, we're going to take our leader line and do another improved clinch knot. Nice, simple, easy, effective knot right there. Size six bait holder hook and we're going to repeat with the improved clinch knot make sure that's tight man make sure your line is tight so we got our three and a half feet right here got our egg sinker and our bead and the purpose of this bead is to protect your knot so when you're casting this weight is constantly banging against your barrel swivel so this bead is added protection to protect your knot. So if it wasn't here, you'd get all that banging from every cast, just banging against your knot, causing abrasion to your knot and just weakening that knot. I think since we have the bait holder hook, we're going to start off with the garlic scent power eggs, man. It's all about scent and color. 
so we got the nice chartreuse color right here and we got the funky garlic scent now you might ask yourself why garlic well because it's potent man and these fish can pick this stuff up from miles and miles away man so but what we do is get the two power eggs slide it up on the hook like that and trout have very good vision man they have very good vision that's why it's also important not to use real thick line because they can see that they can sense that and they know it's not natural that's why i say no more than eight pound test remember these so you have your bobber and you got your snap swivel now this is going to be your bite indicator so you take your snap swivel and the little end that you would usually put your line through you want to press down on your bobber and feed that through the top of the hook like so unhook the snap bend it open like that you don't even want to keep it tight and closed because once that once you pull up set the hook on the fish the bobber might fly if you don't take it off but keep it as open and loose as possible so you could just snatch that before you set the hook say if it was a windy day you just get a little weight a little drop shot weight like so and then hook it to the bottom if it was a windy day and i didn't have weight on that the wind could be blowing the remainder of the line that's out the water real 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 hard and it will start to raise up your bobber making it appear as if you have a fish but actually it's just the wind so if you put a little weight on there man it stays down and put and you only only goes up if you have actual fish i know y'all seen in walmart man that there was just a wide range of power baits the ones that have worked for me the 42 percent stronger rainbow power bait and another good one for me has been the garlic power bait also cheese and a brand called zeke's now zeke's has a corn power bait that has been outstanding i've had multiple hookups with that but they didn't carry that at walmart you might have to go to bass pro or somewhere for that but we're not going to overcomplicate things man we're just giving you the basic tools that you need to get started fishing man so enough of all that let's get to the fishing and how the bite indicator works is if you're getting a bite it's going to start jumping up that means the fish is taking your bait to taking off but you have instances where the fish is coming in so your bobber is just going to drop 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 and keep dropping and that means that you do still have a fish on but he's coming into you but the thing about the power eggs is they're firm they're going to stay on there they're going to stay on that hook even when you do manage to land a fish uh, chances is you can reuse that bait i left those power bags out out for about a half an hour no bites so that tells me that's just not what they're interested in today so now that i got my size 14 treble hook here we get our power bait roll it up in a ball first and cover the hook Now you can throw it out here, ball just like that. But what I have found is that when you throw it out here, balled like that, when it gets in their mouth, those treble hooks have a little bit of a hard time hooking into them. I've lost fish doing it this way. So my preferred way and method of doing it, sticking it in the palm of my hand and rolling it out. And then you have what resembles somewhat of a mice tail somewhat of a worm you can see that the hooks showing itself a little bit so when you roll it out and thin it out the hooks have a higher chance of hooking onto them fish when it gets in their mouth and they gulp it you're not going to be successful at any of this unless it does that right there that's what you want to be sure of that it floats 
so you want to dip that and do do this test before casting it out for reals by doing that you also get the dough wet and it firms up a little bit so when you do cast out it doesn't just fly off on your cast guys in other news i got word that they had stocked some lightning trout now for those who aren't familiar of what lightning trout is lightning trout is a hybrid rainbow trout which i think like every one in a million a trout comes out like albino and then they have to wait till they get another one in the wild and then they breed them together and they get these lightning trouts for those who have been following the channel knows it's been a personal mission of mine to get a stringer a limit of lightning trout which is five lightning trout that means it's coming in it's coming in you got a fish on y'all We got a beautiful lightning trout on the Zebco, man. And there you go. Beautiful lightning trout. There you go. And why I think it's more effective than a bell is because this bobber will stop dropping if the fish picks up your bait and starts coming towards you. Now, it's only when it's going away from you will you get that ding, 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 ding to get your bell to ring. But if it's coming towards you, your, your bell wouldn't ring. Look at that bobber, y'all. See it bouncing? Look at that. Look, going up. Going up. Oh, yeah. Fish on, y'all. Using ultralight gear makes this pipe so much better. Feel all the head shakes. Oh, no, he didn't. Yo, yo. Alright, set the hook on him that time. Coming right in. Came right in just like that y'all show you a cool thing about this basket so when you do get a catch all you do slide them in the door goes down they trap they can't get back out and they in there protected safe another thing when trout fishing you do want a smaller reel anywhere from a 500 reel which in some brands is a five or a ten which is a thousand in most real brands so anywhere from um 500 to 2000 max casting and reeling all day you don't want nothing too heavy man you don't want a 4000 reel you don't want this big bulky thing so the ultralight is not only for the fight of the fish is so you can throw out tiny 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 little mini jigs you know and weights got some more bites y'all look at that bobber go something biting yeah he's biting he's biting oh now he's coming in now he's coming in gotta tighten up that drag then lift up on him make sure yeah he's he's there he's hooked look at him darting through the water ooh, ooh. 
and for not the greatest drag on these that handled very well nice these things fight man they put up a fight Um, they call them lightning trout because of how they dart through the water looking like lightning it's looking like lightning bolts just going through the water Bloop. drop them in like that you can give one spot about eh, 15 minutes half an hour and if you don't get no action there then you got to move every time i go after my lightning trout limit i only end up with three fish five times this has happened i end up with exactly three fish three i lost a fish earlier that would have been four but sometimes when you're trying for something it happens but when you're not trying you know and when you least expect it that's when those type of things happen when you're not going for it when that's not the goal for today it just happens so. oh yeah oh yeah Y'all see that bobber going? That is a fish on. Yep, make sure that thing is set. Oh yeah, hook set in effect. Woo! Here we go. Here we go, y'all. And it's another lightning. Woo -hoo -hoo. That looked like a lightning bolt. I'm telling you, that's why they call him lightning. It's the way he be zipping and ripping throughout this thing. Look at that. Magnificent. Magnificent. He trying to shake that hook. That's why it's important you get that tension on it. We just gonna bring him on in. Slide him on in. Like so. Yeah. Number four. We went away from a limit, y'all. Oh, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. One more last and final tip to this beginner's guide of catching stock trout. One of the most important things when you are out here fishing for trout is you must have patience. This is the bait and wait technique. So you have to wait and that means you have to have patience. So although I got my first two fish within an hour, I waited maybe three hours to catch to the next two. Um, didn't get my limit. Just trying to knock out two birds with one stone and uh, knocked out one bird. That gives me something to look forward to. Until the next one, y'all be cool, y'all be blessed, peace.